Hello again, I am Blunty, and as I say these words, there are just 11 days left until I'll be preparing to head to a midnight launch for the Nintendo Switch. This morning, I came across a little sliver of news that may give yet another reason to hope that the Nintendo Switch really can be what brings Nintendo back from their catastrophic Wii U tailspin days. Perhaps one may even dare to hope back into their prime from glory days long gone. Reported by JPGameIndustry.biz comes information from an event called the Game Creators Conference 2017 run in Kansai, Japan. A Nintendo third-party representative revealed that it plans to open the platform of Nintendo Switch even for indie developers. That sentence sounds a bit reductive, even to indie developers, but I suspect that's just the Google machine translation at work. I don't think they'd be that kind of passive-aggressive about it. (laughs) But it is pretty much a no-brainer anyway. Of course Nintendo want indie devs interested in the Nintendo Switch, because the indie dev scene has of course snowballed over the last decade into a glorious machine churning out amazing titles that no AAA dev would ever have given a chance in the sun because they were just too unusual or unproven concepts, or something they couldn't attach one of their big IPs to. Titles that have now become critical and commercial success stories beyond anything any indie dev from a decade and a half ago could even dare to dream about. And that's great that Nintendo are saying the right words to the indie devs. More interestingly, however, is the statement made about what it will cost small development teams to get their hands on a proper development kit console for the Nintendo Switch. Just quickly, for those who don't know, a dev kit in this context is, at the most basic level, some specially set up console hardware and a suite of software tools and frameworks so game makers can run their unfinished code on real hardware that performs and acts exactly like retail hardware end users will be using does, but also under Beneath all that are things like debugging facilities so devs can see and keep track of what their code is doing and what errors may be happening and why. And it seems the development kit will cost around 50,000 yen. Directly converted at current rates, that's about 440 US dollars, so probably safe to bet it'll be around 500 dollars or less. Meanwhile, apparently, a PS4 dev kit costs around $2,500, but it also has been reported that Sony has let some devs basically borrow dev units for free. I guess it just depends on how desperate Sony are to have any given title on their system. But with the Nintendo Switch dev kit at a very accessible $500, alongside the growing reports about how easy the Switch is to develop on, and even port games almost directly over from other systems with very little work at all, it seems Nintendo's repeated claims of being aggressively seeking out third-party support and lots of it, and indeed making things as easy as they can for other developers, is ringing true. And while, as I've said before, it is tough to give Nintendo the benefit of the doubt these days, having in recent times stomped out a great quantity of the goodwill they used to be given quite freely, it does at least on the surface appear that they are now serious and earnest about earning back some faith, both from developers and from us end users. So, to those of you out there who keep an eye on such things or just enjoy some indie games, I now have to ask, what indie games and which indie game devs would you breathlessly scramble for to make an appearance on the Nintendo Switch? Off the top of my head, I'm thinking of things like Stardew Valley, that seems like a no-brainer. I own it on Steam, but I have yet to dive into it for fear I'll become hopelessly addicted like so many have before me and then get nothing done for weeks on end. (laughs) Uh, Abzu would work well, I think. Enter the Gungeon, a fantastic little shooter. That would be a blast to have on the go. Oh, and the other day I saw Subset Games, the folks behind cult hit space-based roguelike FTL, Faster Than Light, are working on a new and very compelling looking procedurally generated turn-based strategy game where you use mechs to fight off gigantic alien monsters. It's called Into the Breach. I can imagine that being a pretty good fit for the Nintendo Switch too. It'll also be interesting to see if any indie devs take on Switch exclusive titles and see what they can do with the unique functions of the Joy-Cons. In any case, the coin where one side makes me cranky with Nintendo and the other side makes me smile like a child, today lands smiley face up. I wonder what they'll do tomorrow, though. (laughs) It's always a bloody roller coaster with Nintendo, isn't it? Thanks for watching. I am Blunty, and I will catch you next time.